Spencer Linton teamed up alongside Jerem Jordan. There's a couple of graduates from BYU here. And we're going to welcome in another BYU graduate. He did it. He is he the it. 21st greatest walk-on of all time in college football, according to Big Game Boomer. It's pretty high. His name is Dennis Pitta, and yes, he is a BYU graduate. So not only are you a fantastic walk-on and a Super Bowl champion, Dennis, now you're a graduate, and now in a weird way, are you and Jerem friends because we have time for you to discuss all of this? No, I don't think we're friends. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, um, Acquaintances. I did walk on to BYU. I walked at graduation uh, last week. So I'm doing a lot of walking at BYU. But um, no, thank you, guys. I appreciate the, um, the congratulatory uh, statement there for my graduation. I, I, uh, I do feel more accomplished now. I... <laughs> I have a degree from BYU. I'm, I'm a proud alum. All three of us are. There, there's a great picture there. Yeah. My yeah, mother took you, that man. picture, actually. Nice. Right after the uh, graduation ceremony. So Great framing. I feel good about it. Last week was a, was a big week in the pit of home. You've got a new aura and a new energy, Dennis. You have so much knowledge now. Just I do amazing. have more knowledge, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, took, I, took a, a, I took a few classes that helped me gain more knowledge, but... I uh, I feel smarter. I feel wiser. I feel good. I yeah. need to ask you this. Is this a power play by you to show that you have bigger hair than Jerem Jordan does? I know. I'm kind of looking at the quaff right now, and I'm like, I can't hang with that. Yeah, it's very quaffed right now. Actually, Ben, before I got on, he was he was trying to figure out who had a higher quaff, me or Jerem. But <laughs> I think I have just like fuller richer thicker hair than yeah, Jerem, so it it's just true kinda... you're definitely richer than me i know that <laughs> oh dennis well, Pitta. a few fronts hair yeah hair, hair being one of them financially <laughs> yeah yeah sure. I, I i did want to ask you this while i was the one as you pointed out and people you know behind the scenes people were like these guys hate each other i was the one to encourage you to finish right like <laughs> like you weren't gonna do it and i was like hey you got to do it before jim mcmahon like he got, he got super old. You can't get that old. Come on, man. Is that I, I, I yeah. do want to ask you this, like what took so long? Because I was encouraging you, but you were very defiant. <laughs> what took so long? Yeah, I, I, I think we should set the record straight. You did no encouraging. That video <laughs> was a complete joke. Um, what are you talking about? Never have we been friends. Never have we talked outside of this. <laughs> never have, has our relationship been like that? I mean, I think you made a joke and I kind of, piggyback on it and you know I, anybody believing that you actually encouraged me or that we're actual friends away from this I, they're being misled so <laughs> um i would just say you know sense the sarcasm in, in in my voice in that video and uh understand that jerem and i are no closer to being friends than we were <laughs> before i graduated i i and thought so, that we had made some up some ground there but i was clearly mistaken long live yeah, the you few. were mistaken so it, it did yeah, it did take me a while to, to finish at BYU. I, uh, I had 10 credits left, and I was able to do them via independent study online in my home. And, you uh, and Michael Orr. Yeah, it, independent study is interesting because you sign up for a class, and you have basically a year to complete it. And so uh, sometimes I took the whole year and uh, – to complete the class. And then I got motivated towards the end, took a couple of classes within like six months and, and finally got it done. But it takes a while. It's t listen, there's nothing harder than trying to go back and, and take another class being 10, oh, 15 years removed. Absolutely. It, it took me about two and a half years to finish those 10 credits. <laughs> and I had been like 12 years removed, I think from BYU when I started. Oh, so my goodness, it was a grind. I'm going to be honest. And, you know, be, being back in like, writing papers and, and doing reading while you have three kids running all around the house. My wife's pregnant with the fourth. Congratulations. Which, by the way, she is having this baby on Friday. Whoa! Yes, I'm going to hey. be a father of four. That's awesome, Big man. announcement Congrats. coming from the pit of home again, yeah. It's been a big couple weeks for us. Thank you. Wow. Dennis, that is fantastic. Boy, boy or girl, what are, what, what are we talking about here? Uh, it is a girl. Nice. And so we have... One boy who's our oldest, he's eight. We have twin girls uh -huh. who are six. And then, and then we waited a little bit longer on this one. This is another girl. So uh, the twins really wore us out. We're, um, we needed some time to recuperate before we thought about <laughs> having a fourth. But 
Here we are. This is the week. A season of wow. monumental changes for Dennis Pitta and his family, who joins us now over Zoom on BYU Sports Nation. Wow, this is uh, fantastic news, Dennis. Um, I want to stay with the positive mojo and the good vibes here. Why? And take it to BYU football. <laughs> because I'm friends with Dennis. I thought I was, too. <laughs> friends with Dennis. After last week, apparently no, not. Spence and Jeez. I are genuinely friends. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis, when you look at BYU football, we were just talking about Heather Dinich of ESPN listing BYU as one of seven college football playoff sleepers going into the 2022 season. And you know what? It's not that much of a stretch because we expect BYU to be a preseason top 25 team for the first time since you were playing in 2009. It's been a while in that regard. What do you think of BYU's chances to really make some national noise this year and maybe sneak into a New Year's Six game, if not really flirt with the college football playoff in November. Yeah, go ahead and throw those blue goggles on. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, listen, I think they have as good of a chance as they've ever had. I think the, they have the right pieces at the most critical positions. I mean, you have the offensive line figured out, a bunch of those dudes returning. It's a talented group. You got a ton of talented wide receivers and the most important position quarterback, you have a returning starter. And so uh, you have to like their chances. I mean, defensively, they'll figure it out. They'll, uh, they'll piece together a good defense, and, and they'll be just fine. I think offensively, they're going to be able to move the ball. I mean, they've got a lot of experience. They've got a lot of talent. And anytime you have a returning starting quarterback, you, you, you have to love the chances that they have. And so I have high expectations. I mean, I think Jaron's going to have – a great season by all accounts. He's got a ton of weapons to throw the ball to, and he's going to have time to throw it. And, uh, you know, you, the only real loss offensively is Tyler Algier, which is a significant loss. But when you have an offensive line that's that talented and a bunch of guys coming back, you can plug a lot of running backs back there, and they're going to be able to to churn out yards for you. So, um, you know, I have high expectations. I think it's going to be a great year. Let's get the Quest for Perfection Part 2 shirts out. Um, no, let's not do that. Um, I think I have mine somewhere. <laughs> do you do you seriously have? I'll it go still? get it. Uh, I think I do. Honestly, I we uh, we recently moved, and so I've been going through a bunch of old stuff. And I I had a big bag of BYU stuff, and I was going through, it and I just tons of T-shirts and stuff, all those logo T-shirts that you know have all these sayings on it and stuff. And Quest for Perfection was in there. <laughs> I think I think it got packed away. I still don't. I don't have it on hand, but yeah. I'll get you on. Um, it, is it Jaron? Jaron? Yeah, it's Jaron Jer Hall. Let's just make it to Jaron Hall. One time, uh, my buddy was on the okay. Spring 06 team just for like six weeks, and kids would ask for his autograph outside the IPF, and he would just sign as Curtis Brown. I was like, that was a really smart move. That was, <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, Big Game Boomer came out with the list, as Spencer mentioned, of the greatest walk-ons in college football history. You were 21st. So my qu question is, why weren't you good enough to get a scholarship out of high school? Uh, it's a good question. I actually – I recently told this story um, – at the student athlete banquet for all of us graduating student athletes mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the night before graduation at BYU on Thursday. And so um, I kind of told my story of, of my journey into BYU. And I, I listen, I was a skinny wide receiver um, in Southern California. And, and I think I had talked to some recruiters and some schools, nobody offered me a scholarship. Nobody really wanted me, but I was, I was kind of a tweener. I, I was tall and lanky and, and skinny. And I, you know, probably not quite fast enough to play wide receiver at the division one level. And I think with the frame I had at the time, I don't think they projected me to be able to put on the amount of weight I needed to, to make the transition to tight end. I think that's why a lot of recruiters overlooked me. I mean, I, I couldn't explain it to you. I think recruiting is, is a crap shoot anyways. And, and a lot of guys get missed every year that are really good football players for whatever reason. And I was just kind of lost in that mix. And uh, fortunately, um, Barry Lamb, who was the recruiter in our area, you guys remember Barry Lamb, oh, who was yeah. the linebackers coach yep. uh, for a long time at BYU. Um, he said, listen, if you want to come up and, and, and if you can get into BYU at the time, like there was no preferred walk on that wasn't really a term. I mean, you had to get into BYU. Like I had to, I had to be a good student and get accepted to BYU on my own. And we know that's and hard for I you. I did that. 
and, and it's hard. Listen, I was a very good student, okay? I wouldn't have got into BYU on my own if I wasn't a good student, Dennis, Jaren. you should ask Jerem what so, his GPA was at BYU. <laughs> All I know is I graduated Jaren. on time. <laughs> Jaren, what was your GPA, by the way? You want to go battle of GPAs here? Go ahead. I graduated on time. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually think I have a 3.3 something cumulative Ooh. GPA. Okay. I wasn't which an isn't athlete bad. with a bunch of tutors. You know, oh, I had to wow. like do it on my own. Wow. Oh, my yeah. I didn't, I didn't use any tutors, actually. I, that, I really didn't. Um, I was a 4.0 student coming out of high school, right? Beat what, that. what were you worried about? Well, it's still hard to get into BYU. I mean, it's even harder now. I don't know if I'd get in now, but <laughs> it is hard. Um, <laughs> Luckily, to, can I finish one story, Jaron, please? Yes. Right. I know your name's Jerome. It's Jerome. For all, for all accounts, it's Jerome. That's right. Uh, so I got into BYU. I know that was, you know, a part of the story you were waiting to hear if I got in or not. And, uh, and so I, I was able to walk on. And I remember they had just made the transition over to the, the new SAB from the Smith Fieldhouse. But us lowly walk-ons were in the Smith Fieldhouse still. We didn't get to go over there. So I had some crummy locker metal locker in the Smith field house for my first couple months. And, um, I had to go to some walk on meeting where coach MP who was ended up being my tight end coach. He, uh, he was like, if you're not a lineman, if you're any other position, you, you don't have a chance of really making this team because we, we can only really use linemen right now. We're always looking for linemen. We're stacked at every other position. So I left that meeting. like, I'm not even going to make this team, you know, long story short, I won't tell the whole thing. I ended up getting on the team, guys, and and it turned out pretty well for me. But yeah. it was uh, it was an interesting journey to that point. It'll be interesting to see where a guy like Tyler Algier at some point ends up on this list too. I know you feel uh, somewhat of an extra camaraderie with him because he's a walk on, and now he's projected to get drafted, kind of in the position where you were in the fourth, uh, maybe the fifth round. Very cool stuff there. But before you go, Dennis, we have to ask you about your buddy Max Hall. And the alumni game that happened recently live on the BYU TV app. What were your impressions of Max Hall, the performance, the Hail Mary, and the whole presentation? Uh, I was impressed with Max. I, I think everybody was. I um, Max was trying to get me to play in that game, number one. And I said, I'm only playing in that game if I can full speed spear Jerem on the field prior to the game. Get in line. Max promised me that that would be, Max promised me that I'd be able to do that, but I, uh, it didn't happen, so I didn't come play. But Max started training a couple weeks prior to it. Like, he started throwing. We, he always does throwing sessions with some of the high school kids and stuff at night, and, and he was stepping in starting to throw, and, and you know, his arm looked good. And so I, I think he went into that with a lot of confidence, and he looked good. He was zipping the ball around, and he looked like his old self out there. And uh, in, in regards to the Hail Mary, number one, I have an issue with it because there were several rule infractions on that play. Yep. And uh, I just, I'm a, I'm a real stickler for rules. I just don't think it should have been allowed from the onset. And so um, I would retroactively give the win to team Royal, uh, especially given the fact that Brian Keel made the catch. Like Brian shouldn't, if I was on that team, Brian would not have been allowed anywhere near the offensive huddle. <laughs> Brian thinks he is an offensive player. Brian kept the ball that he caught, by the way, like he scored a real touchdown in a real game <laughs> in that thing. He's probably got it on his mantle somewhere. Give it to his he kid. got it engraved or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, whatever. Funny story is that was Max's ball. Yes. Max brought it. It he was used the Duke. His own ball. An NFL ball. Yeah. 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 An NFL ball. And Brian <laughs> kept it, of course, because he, he thought he deserved it. Brian didn't even make that catch. If you look at it, Cody Hoffman trapped the ball on Brian's chest from behind. And Brian, like, somehow, like, got his arms around it in time to, to hold on before it got knocked away. But Brian didn't make that catch. We're crediting Brian with the catch that Cody Hoffman made. <laughs> so I, I just have issue with that last play. But other than that, it was a great event. I, <laughs> actually, when I was up there, when I was up there for graduation, I was through the SAB and, uh, you know, talking to a bunch of guys and, and they were putting a hard press on me to come play. And I, I might have to do it in the next, uh, it sounds like they're going to do it every year. So I'll get up there at some point. I don't, I don't know how many plays I'm going to log in, but, uh, see if i can't make it up for for next alumni game let's yeah, go dude. yeah dennis on, pitta man. sort of committing and we will take that we will take that i'll see what i can do about the uh spear jaron before the game <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, that's actually still, uh, you know, a mandatory request. Also, if, if Jerem's going to be in the huddle with his little microphone trying to get audio, we're not having that either. It's a regular we're kicking him out of the huddle. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was, you don't belong in the huddle. <laughs> Neither did you. Oh, well, you weren't there. Yeah, Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> Thanks for joining the show, question mark. Oh, yes. Great to talk to you. The You're feud welcome, continues. Spencer. Thanks for having me. Congrats <laughs> on doing what thousands of BYU students do every year, Dennis. Yeah. Graduate. Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness.